Hi, I'm Dr. Vidushi from Suvi Eye Institute, Kota, Rajasthan, India. And in this video, we discuss some of the techniques that can be used to perform phacoemulsification in a small pupil. Now, fa performing phacoemulsification in a small pupil has always been difficult, but with the availability of new techniques and tools, it has now become possible to perform phacoemulsification even in these difficult cases. Now, as you can see in this clip, uh, every step of phacoemulsification is difficult in a case of small pupil beginning right from the capsular excess which is being performed here exactly at the margin. And because of this, there is an increased incidence of complications like nucleus drop, vitreous prolapse, iris uh, tear, etc. which are all increased in cases of small pupil. Now in this clip we see the use of Helon 5 to perform a viscomidriasis. The pupil is seen to be dilating very well with the injection of Helon 5 which is a super cohesive viscoelastic. And again as the phacoemulsification progresses and the Helon 5 is washed out of the anterior chamber the pupil becomes small again. And a re-injection of Helon 5 at this stage would help to redilate the pupil as you can see here. But in all these cases, it is important to perform a slow uh, motion phacoemulsification and to have minimal turbulence in the anterior chamber so that the viscoelastic stays within the anterior chamber and is not washed out very rapidly. And in these cases, the bottle height must be low so that we have low fluidics and the helon stays within the anterior chamber. And must remember to remove all that helon 5 at the end of the case, especially from under the IOL. Now in the next clip we show the use of Mulligan ring for managing a small pupil. Mulligan ring is a very convenient device with, which comes with its own injector. It comes in two sizes of 6 and 7 millimeters, and can be injected through the main incision itself to enlarge the pupil uniformly. As you can see here, the four scrolls of the Mulligan ring are placed in the iris border to enlarge the pupil. Normally uh, the three scrolls that emerge out first can be enlarged fairly easily and then we need a second instrument to position all the scrolls in the iris border uh, in an optimum manner and this provides a uniform dilatation and protects the iris border all around. The phacoemulsification can then proceed like in any normal case. The advantage of the Mulligan ring is that you do not have to make any additional incisions. It is simple to inject, does not take a very long time and provides a uniformly dilated pupil with protection of the iris border. In all these cases, it is, it is important to perform a careful and gentle phacoemulsification so that there is less stress on the zonules and because the pupil can create problems even at later stages in the uh, case so therefore we must be careful to uh, do a slow motion phacoemulsification and ensure that everything goes smoothly. Here the IOL is being dialed into the capsular bag with the Mulligan ring in place and then again because in all these cases viscoelastic would have been used uh, very generously it is important to remove all that viscoelastic from the capsular bag especially from under the IOL. At the end of the case, the Mulligan ring is removed from, uh, with the same injector uh, that comes with the ring. The scrolls have to be freed from the iris margin first because sometimes the iris becomes edematous during the surgery and therefore pulling on the scrolls without freeing them initially has been reported to even cause iris tears. So free all the scrolls, get the ring out into the anterior chamber and then one of the scrolls is engaged in the Mulligan ring injector and then it is the ring is withdrawn from the same incision that was used to inject the ring and to perform phacoemulsification. This is something that becomes fairly uh, easily manipulable with a few cases and the phacoemulsification can proceed very smoothly. Now in this video clip we show the use of iris retractors which have been available for a long time which can be used in cases of small pupil to enlarge it and perform phacoemulsification. Four iris retractors are used. The disadvantage is that four additional paracentesis incisions have to be made. Uh, most people now prefer the diamond configuration rather than the rhomboid configuration because it provides more visualization inferiorly where most of our phaco movements would be taking place. Also these iris retractors tend to slip off uh, as the case progresses. 
uh, especially the one that is placed sub incisionally and therefore we also have to be careful that we do not rotate the globe too much because that increases the chances of the iris retractor slipping out however if they do slip out we can just put them again taking care not to catch the capsulorex's edge with the iris hook as you can see here the iol is being placed in the capsular bag now in this case uh, there is again a small pupil uh, because of a thick fibrotic iris and this clip shows the use of the pupillary stretch technique using two uh, Kuglin hooks. This technique is most suitable for the post uveitic thick fibrotic iris which can dilate with the use of iris hooks. However, we must not stretch too much and we should not apply too much force suddenly and as that may cause tear of the iris. So the increase of force has to be gradual. And it is a good idea to enlarge a little bit of the pupil with the pupillary stretch and then use viscomidriasis to enlarge the pupil further. The rexis is now being performed here. It is being performed without the use of a dye, but it is always better to use dye in such cases where the visualization is poor and the capsule may be thin, friable or fibrotic. It is also now believed that the pupillary stretch technique releases a lot of prostaglandins and therefore may cause increased inflammation and should be avoided. It does however have some role in selected cases of post uveitic uh, fibrotic irides only. We should also remember not to use the pupillary stretch technique in cases of floppy iris as the pupillary stretch will make the iris even more floppy and the iris will tend to prolapse out of the incisions. Now this clip shows the use of intracameral injection of preservative free lignocaine to achieve pupillary dilatation. Here as you can see the pupil is quite small, it's a wide cataract and injection of preservative free lignocaine into the anterior chamber dilates the pupil fairly well. However this technique does not work in all cases but if it does it can be further supplemented with the use of viscomidriasis to achieve a fairly well dilated pupil and we can then perform capsulorexis and the rest of the phaco emulsification as in any usual procedure. The use of epi sugarcane is quite popular in some countries where uh, lignocaine and uh, intracameral adrenaline are used in combination and it is a technique which can be used as a supplement to other techniques in cases where the pupil is small or constricts during the phaco emulsification process and therefore we can use uh, either intracameral adrenaline or intracameral lignocaine to achieve pupillary dilatation. So to summarize, the use of iris retractors, pupil expansion rings and high viscosity ophthalmic viscoelastic devices has now uh, made it possible to perform phaco emulsification even in cases of small pupils and a combination of different techniques makes it safe to perform phaco emulsification in these difficult cases.